we've got the Packers favored by three. Of course, the Bears are uh, no, the Bears are officially eliminated from the playoffs at seven and nine. Um, but the Bears are seven and nine, man. They're, yeah, they're uh, they're back now. They're they're on, they're in a bit of a roll. So you have Justin Fields coming off of one of his best games. Jordan Love continues to play extremely well, one of our highest graded quarterbacks over the last six or seven weeks. Coming off a great game again last week on Sunday Night Football. Packers playing for their playoff lives here. What are you looking for in this? I mean, totally different game. This is one of the rare ones where, like, so many times now, these division games are stacked to the back end of the season, so these teams all play each other, like, twice in three weeks or whatever. Um, And you're like, well, we kind of saw this a couple of weeks ago. What's different this time? This game was week one. So it's week one and week 18 This this in this division uh, split. The teams could not be more different than they were the last time they met. I mean, you've got Green Bay. Jordan Love is coming off this incredible performance where we talked about how he has the tendency every now and again to catch fire. Kind of like the NBA jam thing, you know, where he just hits the run. and then <laughs> he's, he's on fire. Then he can't miss. Uh, so he's, he had one of those games. The... Packers defense like Joe Barry's defense was amazing against Minnesota and that like off the back of several games in which he'd been or his defense had been catastrophic and we were saying you know five different quarterbacks or whatever have had their best game this year against that defense so can he do that twice or was that just one game with his back up against the wall against the Vikings who were starting a rookie quarterback uh can he do that against Justin Fields and then Chicago like everything is better right now I mean yeah, it, it's been sort of since Fields came back from injury, but remember what he was like before he got injured, which was to say bad. I mean, earlier in the year, there were games where um, he had wide open receivers, and not, in, not only was he sort of missing them, he wasn't even seeing it. Like, either he couldn't pull the trigger when he'd seen it, or simply wasn't seeing it at all. I mean, he looked lost. The injury, in a weird way, might have actually been the best thing that could have happened to him because he got to sit down and reset but since coming back, Fields has taken a huge step forward, not just, you know, the running aspect, but as a passing, processing, pocket quarterback. I mean, he's doing things now that he simply wasn't doing earlier in the year before he got hurt. And that makes everything about Chicago a different prospect. That, that, was, the, that was one of the curious things of this season. Why We were having that same conversation last year. Yeah, it's, you know, he was a dynamic runner down the stretch, better as a passer, still more room to improve. And then it felt like they regressed. Fields regressed the first three weeks until he ran into the Broncos defense that was you know, <laughs> horrendous the first six, seven weeks of the season. Um, so, yeah, Fields, it is at the point where, you know, Bears fans are talking about keeping Fields and, and going through all those scenarios. If you keep him and you trade down again and you get this haul and you pair him with Marvin Harrison Jr. and another receiver or whatever it might be, um, that people are intrigued. And he's got one more game to just make it even more, you know, awkward for everybody like if he has another good performance it's just one more game where it's like man feels might be the guy so brad spielberg who's on this show at least once a week here uh, you know bears guy pretty good job having a pulse of of bears nation so to speak and you know he he was tweeting yesterday about how he's impressed by field's improvement there there is probably this in-house decision where it's like man what what do we do with this late season surge where people like the the locker room loves Fields. They love what he's doing. What do we do with that when we know we've got this opportunity? Depending, I'm not going to use the word generational, but not every year do you have two guys going into the season you think are locked in as one and two overall at QB who, who are probably going to end up there. And they look like really good NFL prospects and Caleb Williams and Drake May. And oh, by the way, Michael Penix is balling out, and he's 24. But, man, he, if he goes and beats Michigan next Monday night, they're going to be talking about Penix going in the top 10. There's going to be talk about Bo Nix going in the top 15. There's a lot of QBs to choose from here. Well, also, the one thing you probably do know about Justin Fields at this point is even if he's not the guy, like let's say you decide to keep him around. He's earned one more year, right, before we have to pay him big money. We'll figure it out. We'll, we're going to go with him this year, and then if it all goes to hell, we can still move in a different direction. The one thing you probably do know about him is that he's good enough that you're not going to be picking number one overall again, right? That and you wouldn't be this year if it was just it's down to Justin point. Fields. So it is that this conversation is difficult because it's like a three pronged thing. You have to ask number one: Is Justin Fields better in isolation than Caleb Williams or Drake May? Number two: Is he going to be worth getting paid forty five million dollars a year, which is what you're going to be staring down the barrel of if you think he is the guy? 
And then number three, if you, you know, if you give it, if you give him a shot and sort of hedge, try and play the middle game and just keep him short term, you're not going to have this shot again. You're going to need another backup plan for quarterback because you're not going to have the number one overall pick again. Now, if that if that hedge involves trading down from number one and getting a giant draft haul, and maybe you have the capital next year to get up there again, but it's not as simple as it is this year where you have the choice now. And so the the, the point I want I wanted to add on what where the conflict might be in the building in Chicago, it, it's feeling good down the stretch. Fields just had that nice game. It's the snow and it vibes are high, right? Feeling good in Chicago. What if he goes into Lambeau? Right, the place where Aaron Rodgers, you know, he owned you, and then he passed off ownership to Jordan Love, and the, like, where does the narrative aspect come in? This feels like a big fun game for the Bears. Not only can they knock the Packers out of the playoff mm -hmm. picture, um, as the Lions did last year in Lambeau, the Bears can do that. And what did the Lions do off the back of that? Well, they carried that momentum into next year, got better, and now look at them winning the division. So the Bears feel like they have a lot to play for here. Um, and we don't have to talk about them worried about draft position because they're locked in at one. And yeah. who cares if they're picking 10 versus 12 versus 14? Hey, you got one. You know, it might not matter as much what that second pick is. So it's, it's an interesting spot for the Bears, and especially if Fields and the Bears go into Lambeau, win the game from a decision perspective. For Green Bay, win and you're in. And, you know, again, the big question for me is the defense. Can they, can they do just enough? Because I am so impressed with Jordan Love. I'm so impressed with their offense and what Matt LaFleur has done, the way Love has turned his season around and developed, and just the confidence that he's playing with, man. It, it really felt like a, a switch flipped from a confidence perspective. And that's why Chris was highlighting all the off, you know, the jump throws and the off-balance throws. Like, Love is feeling it. And he's trusting his arm, and he's putting the ball in spots that he wasn't even close to hitting earlier in the season. Yeah, love, love has been fantastic. Um, the, the defense, though, it's—I don't think it's a question anymore about can they do just enough. I mean, we we saw last week what that defense is capable of if the, if they call a correct game, like if they get more aggressive, if they blitz a little bit more, if they send uh, slot corners at the quarterback instead of just sitting back in soft zones or off man coverage. I mean, that's the thing we just saw. Okay. It was against a rookie, but Nick Mullins came in and was still equally as lost. Like he, he moved the ball a bit, but he was still under pressure all the time. The defense still did a really good job. So I think the bar has been raised. Like people have been complaining about that defense all season long, not because it stinks, but because it should be better than it's been. And we saw earlier in the year, it was better. And then in that game, it was better they are capable of much more than they have shown for a lot of the season. So I think that is the standard. Can they repeat what they did against Minnesota against a much more difficult uh, opponent to prepare for because of Justin Fields? And then, yeah, I think it's two teams potentially riding this wave of uh, a surge of improvement. The, the Bears and Justin Fields and that defense, you know, Tyreek Stevenson has had one of the best grades of any corner in the last few weeks. They've, they've got some really good uh, performances on the defensive side and then for Green Bay Jordan Love has been amazing recently but also all of those young receivers are playing well like and they've been without some of the like if you were looking on paper you would say arguably their top two targets are Christian Watson and Luke Musgrave and neither one of them has been playing in the last couple of weeks instead it's been Tucker Craft Bo Melton was the first 100 yard receiver they had but all of these guys are playing yeah. well and improving so if they're able to actually make it and hit the playoffs with Jordan Love playing as well as he is right now, if he catches a good run, and all of these young receivers that are like pieces for the future, all developing and getting better, I mean, it could be a huge uh, moment for that Green Bay team. All I know is this offseason, we are going to be hyping up the NFC North because I love the way the Packers are trending, Bears are trending in a good direction. We know what the Lions have become. And the Vikings are still a solid team that have, you know, dealt with four different quarterbacks this year, lost their starter. So the NFC North looks like they're trending up. We got the Packers favored by three, playoff lives on the line for the second straight year. Where are you going with this one? Going with the Bears. I think they are a different proposition now than they were earlier in the year. Wow. Going with, I'm, oh, I'm also taking the Bears. I'm also taking the Bears. Mm -hmm. I think the Packers win by two, though. Yeah. Packers get into the playoffs, game-winning field goal, to win it but not cover the spread. I can see it. How's that? Yep. Bears by two 
I'm sorry, Packers by two in this game. 